<laughs> Mom, <laughs> where are you? No, it's going to happen. <laughs> then after the Anyway, no, this is actually a fascinating subject. We will take it up later. On the bar. Uh, on the subject, India? Yeah. Uh, we had actually two stories there. Yeah, there was a company meant by uh, Christopher Weber. It appears in Gazette 2. Uh, a long ways back, where he had moved off uh, representatives, an embassy of sorts, arrived in uh, Grant Grantville. And then many years later, in the draft that he first got to work on now, Chuck Gannon actually went back and, and is using those characters in the papal sticks. And he's very prominent. The Englishman, anyway, uh, North. So that story of, of Christopher's is kind of. History of self has kind of vanished. I don't know. I, I, I tried to write a story on one of the kids of the Volvo Empire, and I was threatened with death by a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to throw that in there. By, who? by the Maoris, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> the, bar, the bar jumped on me uh, that if I dared use one of the Volvo children in one of my stories, that I would be hunted down and killed. So or I just yeah, want to throw sent that to New Zealand. <laughs> well, uh, Tim. Discuss it with me afterwards. I mean, this well, no. Is, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I brought up this humor value only. All right, fine. Um, you, you have to understand that Tim is forever writing genius children. Genius children. I mean, his expert. major character is Blaise Pascal, who hangs himself by the foot from the steeple of a Methodist church. So. There's you a story never know that. what it's Tim is genius. going to do with right children. Anyway, this is not necessarily precluded. Um, there was that story, and then what's the other one? I forgot. Oh, my gosh, I'm Ronnie. But that was set in the most politically inconsequential principality I could find. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, in the in this period, just, just visualize it geographically as being kind of an ice cream cone shape. So at the top where the uh, uh, where, uh, where the mountains in, are. Uh, the yeah, you know, this is the round part and sort of a little U-shaped area below. It's the Ganges plate, goddamn. Yeah, right. I, 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 okay. I like ice cream. And <laughs> but uh, you can see where my head's. Any Hindus the rock? Uh, the north. So that northern it was yesterday. group is the Mughal Empire, and the little area that's the cutout is jungle area, which. They have the influence in, but not really ruling. Then below that, the central third, roughly, you have, I think, five sultanates that are under, yeah, that well, are independent and are very worried mm -hmm. about the Mughals. And one of them was actually in the 1630s in the process of being con conquered by our pal, our exam. Um, and then below that, um, you, you have what is nominally the starts with a V, and I can't remember. Yeah, 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 I can slur it there. Uh, uh, yeah, I was right off the top. Uh, but that empire is sort of being held together by duct tape. Uh, sort of political equivalent of duct tape, oh. and there are <laughs> lots of little and. Various principalities that formally owe allegiance to the empire are feeling more or less degrees of, of autonomy. And my story was set on one of the in one of the little ones in the southwest. Um, and of course, we also really have a third story, which is. Yeah, Trankabar. Trankabar. But the thing about Trankabar, they go, they trade, they go home. They're right, exactly. Okay. It, it, yeah, there's only one scene in India where they're not in the fort, they right. go out to a bar to trade. So. Basically, we've just, there's almost nothing in India. Actually, there is nothing in India itself. It's, yeah. I, I just want to bring up as a selling point um, for myself. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> subtle, subtle, Tim. I, I'm not subtle. Um, the uh, Jacqueline Pascal, who's in the library translating for everybody, would have known the Dutch interest in all these maps. So that might be a starting point for a Japanese are coming, Japanese are coming story. It doesn't have to be me that writes it, but in other words, it's possible <laughs> the, the Japanese are in Vietnam, or whatever Vietnam is called. Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia, um, who are being brought by the Dutch to supposedly, not, I don't know about Grandville, maybe Magdeburg. 
I'm, uh, it's a possibility that Jacqueline would have known because the Dutch might have gone to her to get translation. Okay. Garrett knows. Uh, you know, since you mentioned Southeast Asia, I do want to say one thing about it. Having grown up in a certain period of time, I must say that it was very interesting when, when I looked up a little bit when I was doing the mineral mastery articles, trying to find out, you know, geopolitics of controlled mineral resources. So I see that there's a civil war between the Trin in North Vietnam and the Win in South Vietnam that's been going on since 1627. And this all had a rather familiar sound. <laughs> Uh, are the Kimmer still in, in, in pretty much dominance at this point? Uh, I don't know about the Kimmer. I and know it, that uh, Burma, Burma no, in Cambodia. Cambodia. Is Cambodia around or is it still Burma? It's Kimmer. No, no, no. It's Cambodia and Burma. It's oh, yeah, Burma, Burma, Burma is still west, west, west is, of the is uh, still around. Um, but oh, yeah, the yeah. deal with India, you've got right, literally right, thousands right, right. of. Right. Fair warning, don't anybody try to shout me. Oh, yeah, you yeah, don't want it. But, but no Southeast Asia. Am I a canary in the mine or something? <laughs> yes. Tim, it's always possible, but I shouldn't say don't touch it. But just be well, I was just saying for anybody else, it's in other words, the Japanese won't be as much, or theoretically won't be as much a surprise, because in the book, in the article, in the story in Ring of Fire Three, it's mentioned the Dutch left the Japanese there in what is Vietnam, went back. And then came back and said, "Hey, we could bring you. We, there's things there, so it's potentially possible that Jacqueline Pascal would have overheard, helped translate, uh, been involved with, and have that." I think, uh, I think that's, an, I, that's a potential that should probably remain. I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Just, just, there's things, no though. capacitor for you that. You do have in, in Ayutthaya, which sure. was what sure. became modern Siam, which became modern Thailand. You do have uh, a, a significant Japanese involvement uh, that Garrett Vance is working on. Has worked on, and that has extended to when things went west there, the two other parts of Southeast Asia. I was just really thinking of Jacqueline Pascal thinking she's going to become the Japanese expert and reading Shogun and thinking, therefore, she knows the Japanese. I just thought that would be interesting. A lot of story potential there for cultural <laughs> mystery. You, you know that there is, you can find online, okay, you, can that you can find online just an leave, essay that's you know, something like 100 pages long on what was wrong the with errors in Shogun. Well, I, no, I understand what that, but did Jacqueline wrong. won't know that, yeah. and she's hold like, on, hold on, hold on. The reason that Southeast Asia has to be beware of all. <laughs> oh, you guys got to so be got to be careful about it it's because what Ira and I are beginning to discuss may very well Effect. wind up involving a whole yeah. lot of stuff in Southeast Asia. Yeah. Well, see what's happening is the series has already entered into you can call it a second stage butterfly effect in the sense that all the most of the stories, at least novels. So far, uptimers have played a really prominent role directly. And that is starting to change and will very clearly change for all the readers once Kremlin Games comes out. Because with Kremlin Games, there's really only one American involved. Well, two, but the other guy's a villain and he's kind of important as triggering off the crisis. But Basically one, we got to kill him. Well, yeah, we get to kill him. Basically, one American goes yes, winds up off in Russia early on. Now he's played a very important role as a catalyst, but most of the characters, except for him, are all downtimers. And we're going to be coming into an area eventually, and I, I can see it looming, where almost all the characters are downtimers, and the impact of the Ring of Fire is really not going to involve Americans at all. As appearing as characters himself. Yeah, that's, that's the story right. that, that Ivor and I have been talking about. There's no American so far showing up in there at all. And there may be. There's dramatically good reason to bring one in if you can, just because it tends to make the story a little bit more accessible to most of the readers. But 
But even if you did, it would likely be the same thing is happening with the story of Billy Walter Hunt set in North America. Uh, a long series of stories that Herb's writing in, in what's now Canada. It takes there's, the Inuits out. There's almost no, I'm trying to blank out, there's no Americans in there. So what you're getting to is a point where you're really starting to see just the impact ring of fire that has gone beyond whatever America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the butterfly affects everybody else. No one yeah, right? group of people I can't write in the Inuits are now out. Yes, there's there. lots of people you uh, can't Actually, there's quite a few people. Uh, look, it's always possible to write stories in areas where other people are working. You just got to be careful how you do it. Where the problems usually come in is when it gets into sort of big political issues because that, you know. It's going to affect the other that's people. That's going to affect other people. If, if, it's, if it's kept more narrowly focused around a story, what happens to them? It's a really, really big world, so it's it's really perfectly plausible that a bunch of different things are happening. I just find all the bees' nests to stick my foot in. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have a talent for it. But <laughs> well, one of the one of the things that one of the things that everybody forgets is that there's millions of downtimers, and each one of them has a has a legitimate story. Yeah. 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 Has a concern that they need to deal with. And anyway, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Wait. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. It's wall folks. I. Haven't heard anything about North Africa, Central Africa, <coughs> Ottoman. Uh, well, North Africa. We, we had a bit of a hint with that story that uh, about the. Uh, the I've got the North African Africa story, but it's not. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, which one? Lunga seed. Which one? Malungu seed, the malaria. Oh, Malungu seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a problem is I'm blanking on. Yeah. Jonathan Crespo. Jonathan Crespo's Jones story. But the problem is I'm blanking on. The single most important thing that will happen or not happen in Africa will be whether or not the slave trade will. Yeah. The slave trade pretty well politically devastated Africa. What it did was it gave rise to a series of very powerful coastal kingdoms based on slave raiding and because they would trade them for guns. And well, that, the impact that had further inland was to, to destroy or rip apart the existing polities that existed further inland which were actually more advanced. And and then of course the whole you know effect on the actual population. But but it's it's kind of interesting to, to wonder what would happen in Africa if the slave trade had not happened. Uh, it's it's already happening, that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, it started well, before yeah, we yeah, just yeah, started. It's, it's not just, I mean, the well, sugar has been going it. on for a while. Ottomans have been taking well, slaves well, for a thousand years. I mean, right now, yeah, you know, some right. of that it's, has been going on. It, it was at a lower it was level it, of, that, right. of activity. Right. I mean, it, what, what I'm saying is that we can't stop it at the beginning because it's not the beginning. No, we no, can no. stop it at a low level, but. That's not the issue. Slavery has been around a long time. And, 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 just in all over the world, but it, it, that phenomenon, the transatlantic slavery, right. was something really... It started with the sugar trade. Yeah, but it also went on for two centuries. It did. And, and, and it, it lasted a long time, it was a major trade, it had a huge political impact on Africa. Most people in the United States are aware of what happened in the New World are not aware of what the impact was in Africa. Um, but to, to go back to your question, I don't know yet. Um, the problem is figuring out a way to make that a story. There's, by the way, a possible interesting spin-off, maybe, from one of the stories Ivor will have in his volume, because a group of Ashanti figure who've been brought over as